So welcome to Techno Dad Life and my name is Jeff and so today we're going to just go through a little story or a little timeline of my experience with caching or SSD caching or M.2 caching depending on how you say it. How I'm trying to speed up this little bugger and what I found out. So if you find this video helpful, make sure you check out the links in the description to see how you can support this channel, either through using one of my affiliate links or supporting me through PayPal. So a little while ago, so a little while ago, I did this review of this TerraMaster NAS. And on the side here, you can see there's spots for M.2 drives. And so the, the, TerraMaster operating system is not for me. And so what I started to do was look at how I could use these M.2 drives with different operating systems to get the maximum benefit out of this system. And now, if you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I do everything through Open Media Vault usually. And so Open Media Vault is based on Debian and so, so currently, Open Media Vault doesn't sort of natively support caching, SSD caching, M.2 caching in the GUI. And so what I wanted to do was actually use these M.2 drives and I wanted to use a cache drive. So, so the idea of the cache drive is your most frequently read or write information it goes to the cache drive first and then is dumped off into your hard drives later. So basically it's a copy, copy. Or you can have what's called a mover, so you copy onto here and then later it's moved on to there. And so the systems that I am yeah, used to hearing about are FreeNAS and Unraid. So those both talk about uh, caching and so I started to look into those. So my idea was to find to get this system to be as fast as possible. Okay, that's that's my whole idea from the start. So uh, oh, I keep on calling it FreeNAS, but it's actually TrueNAS. So TrueNAS because they changed their name. Uh, a good person to look up this information with is Lawrence Systems. He talks about TrueNAS and. CFS a lot. So anyway, so in TrueNAS, there are different ways of caching drives. And so basically there's a whole bunch of difference. And so the first one is the what you would think would be cache. And so the way FreeNAS works in most operating systems or a lot of operating systems work is that it fills up the memory first and then, so this is my understanding. If you, I said this wrong, which I'm sure I have, please leave lots of rude comments in the description below. But anyway, so what it does is it fills up the memory first, and then writes to disk. So TrueNAS uses the memory of the system as the cache for the system. So actually, when you pick a cache drive, so say you put an SSD or M.2 drive in there, uh, and you pick cache, what it does is fills up that memory first, and then once that memory is full, it will shunt stuff off into that cache drive. So for on TrueNAS, the fastest way to have uh, a cache is actually just add more memory to your system. Now with TrueNAS 2, there is sort of lots of different ways. So once people found this out, they're, they were like, oh, we should be doing this differently. So you can cache log files or other things into that memory. But those only help you if you have big databases of information. So it doesn't help with your home server where you are watching movies. So that is always going to be in the hard drive memory, the hard, hard, hard drive memory, and is not going to be in that cache drive. So that, with the cache drive, that will not make any difference at all. So the other thing with TrueNAS, depending on how you pick your, of those options, you can have 
asynchronous writes or synchronous writes. If you watch this video, which I'll leave a link in the description below, if you choose synchronous writes, which is the more secure way to do it, it can cut your speeds in half for when you transfer files. So you can do asynchronous uh, transfers, but those are not as secure. So the option is up to you. But for true NAS, caching in any particular way does not actually speed up the system. And if you want to find even more about uh, ZFS and caching, I'll leave a link in the description to this article, which will give you more than enough information about what the different types of caching and what do they mean. So next, I looked at Unraid. And so Unraid uh, is not RAID. That's why it's called Unraid. It has two parity drives, which are like RAID, but they are different. And so there, uh, they have, you know, so what they do is they, if you have a cache drive, what it does, you have to specify which folders will go onto that cache drive, either as a priority all the time or middle or not at all. So when you write to that disk, then a mover, it's called, moves that data over your disk at some time later, like at nighttime or something, unless that cache drive gets full. Now, if you're interested in Unraid, I suggest the videos of Space Invader 1 there. He does great videos. And so I was looking at his, this video is actually from a couple years old. He has newer ones, but just the recommended shares to put on the cache drive. Now, if you look at this, it's the app data folder, domain systems, best on the cache drive. Shared folders are better to be on the array, but cache enabled. So basically what that means is if large amounts of data comes in, it will go to the cache first and then go to the array. And then shares that only are on the array would be shares that you don't write too often. So if you look at that list a little more closely, so ones that should be on the cache drive. So your app data, your domains, and your system information. So why would those be on that cache drive? Well, those are the most frequently used files. So basically, the ones that we want to accessing the cache drive is not every single file, but only the most frequently used ones. The other one he has on here is downloads. And so downloads can take up lots of information and then do that. So here, let's, let's look at this list again. So why would app data, domains, and system? So in that instance, the cache drive, what it is is speeding up our system, not necessarily our network. And so I always thought of a cache drive to actually speed up our network connection or basically how fast we could transfer files in between the, our computer and the server. But that's not what this is. This, they're actually using the cache drive just for the programs, basically the most actively or most often accessed information. And then when we have room, then we could take those things that we download quickly off the network and do that. So nothing that we access is actually speeding up here, except for maybe the system because the system is speeding up because we're caching the system information so, or our program information, so those can work faster internally, but it doesn't really affect us externally. So if we look at Unraid, let's see how this actually works in reality. So we have our two hard drives in an array. So one is a parity disk, one is a, just a regular disk. And then we have our two M.2 SSDs. Then if we click on shares and then click on a share, you can enable write caching here. And so you can do it no, yes, or preferred. So something like app data, which we use a lot. So this would be our Docker information uh, that would be on the array. And depending on if you have domains for uh, Virtual machines, you can put that there. Your 
ISOs, media would definitely not go on the array because that is a something that you access just randomly, so like movies and music like that. And something like the system you would put on the array. So now if you go back to the beginning of this video, you remember what my goal was. My goal was to speed up my system. That's the whole idea I thought the cache was for. We can see on TrueNAS it doesn't do, it doesn't do that either. It's the same speed or quite a bit less depending on if you pick synchronous or asynchronous. On Unraid, basically it's just putting our system files, our app data files on there. You can put other things on there, but it's not going to really make too much of a difference. Uh, downloads on there. So my thought was, so after going through all this, I've been doing this for a few weeks, why not just use the SSDs on this, or the M.2 drives, as just another drive. We could make it a RAID array, the two drives, and then put things like our app data or Docker folder on there. We can't put our system folder on there uh, in Open Media Vault and have it be a RAID array, but we, if we just have one drive, we could put the system information on there, which is eight gigabytes, and then use the root share plugin. So we could use the rest of that M.2 or SSD to its fullest benefit for our apps and our system information. So we can even put our downloads folder on there because if we're doing media saving and we're using things like radar, sonar, things like that with Plex, our client, our download client can download those things into a folder. Those other apps can change them. Uh, say like you have TDAR, which will transcode those movies or shows into different formats for your devices. And then as part of that, they can move them to a different folder. So basically you're getting all the benefits of having a cache drive. You can download all your downloads onto that cache drive. So when they need fast speeds and they're getting changed by something like TDAR, then they're on that drive, but as soon as they're done, they get dumped off onto the hard, regular hard drives where they, you can then access them at normal speeds. So again, that way we're getting all the benefits of caching without any of the drawbacks actually. So having said all that, there is one more thing that I want to show you. So I did find directions on the Ubuntu wiki here. I don't know how long they've been there, but I just found them that shows you how to enable this on Ubuntu, which means you should be able to do it on Debian, which means you should be able to do it on Open Media Vault. And it explains all the different ways of doing it through right back, right through, and right around, or none. We'll just leave that all for you to read. But the most important thing is if we scroll down to the bottom, just to drive the point home, if we look at the information here about the speeds of starting 12 VMs, real time is six minutes, 22 seconds, and then the user is 20 minutes and 39 seconds. So 12 VMs is a lot of VMs to start at once. And then if we look at the different modes here, we can see the first one is 43 minutes and 19 minutes, so it's slower. Second one, 33 minutes and 17 minutes slower. And the last one, 21 minutes and 17. So what that says to me is we should try to get everything on an SSD and try to avoid caching as much as possible. So to me, again, that says don't cache. It'll slow weight things way down. Then just use your SSD or your M.2 as a separate drive where you put your most frequently used information on or and I should say things like downloads that then get transformed and as soon as they're transformed they can go onto your regular hard drives again. So 
So for me, that's what I'm doing. So no caching for me because it's slower and actually doesn't solve any problems. Uh, if you have an SSD, just insert that, put that as a, a regular share, then put your app data, your system folder if you can, or and your downloads if you do downloading and use something like TDAR, radar, or sonar that will move those downloads over to your hard drive when they're done downloading. So I hope you found that helpful. Make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.